somebody okay. I thought was once an arch rival who has now become a friend. And it's because I'm a fan. I listen to his radio show every single morning before this show, before this show. I listened to the starting lineup on Sirius XM NBA radio hosted by Brian Scalabrini and Frank Isola. And I thought he was once a rival, but now he's a friend. And I can, I consider him a, a, a dear friend because I listen to him every single morning. So I feel like I really know him. Frank, have you found parking spots in the city? And thanks for joining us on the show. Um, now, now I'm starting to think that this is an April Fool's joke as well. <laughs> oh man, you're trying to pull a fast one on me. I have found uh, good parking spots in the city. I told you the one time, I pulled into a spot, and it was uh, a woman was in the car. She rolled down the window. She said, oh, I really like you on TV, and it turned out to be Kyrie Irving's aunt. And the first thing I said was, well, she's clearly not listening to the radio show in the morning. <laughs> if, if, I'm, if she really likes me on TV, she would not like me on radio, that's for sure. I heard you on radio talking about the possibility of Kyrie Irving playing basketball in Miami, which would be the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. This is culture killer versus heat culture. How would this app, how would this work in Miami, Frank? Well, you know, you think all right, so Dan Levertard was on his show yesterday and he mentioned he mentioned it. And Dan pretty plugged in with the Miami Heat. Now, is there a chance that Dan is just, you know, throwing stuff out there? Maybe. Something tells me he might have uh, a little intel from the Miami Heat organization. Doesn't mean that it's gonna happen. But after I heard that I contacted somebody who would know and they did tell me that is possible. So you know, I, I don't think it's the craziest move for either team. Obviously, Miami is only, you know, you're getting Kyrie for one year. He's a d dynamic player. Kyle Lowry did not have a good year this season, but I think a lot of it had to do with stuff that was happening in his, uh, fam with his family off the court. I think, uh, you know, a family member was dealing with an illness, and obviously he wasn't in good shape and didn't play well. But, uh, you know, to me, it's not the craziest thing. For, for either team. And I think the Nets would certainly consider if they felt that Kyle Lowry could help them. Frank Isola joining the show. Ben Lyons in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. Frank, you've been covering the NBA for a long time. You've been around some of the all-time great players. What do you make of Kyrie Irving? <laughs> well, you hear us talk about it all the time. The people that love him always say, man, you see that sick handle he's got. He's a great Paul. Look at the talent he has. And I did the game on the Yes Network when he scored uh, 60 points against Orlando. That, that's all great, but to me, he just doesn't play enough. So, you know, the, the best players, they, they have to be out there playing all the time and playing at a high level. And I think the thing that really hurt Kyrie the most was when he went to Boston, and that first year they went to a conference finals without him, and then he didn't really play well for them in year two, and they got bounced in the second round. And really, you know, before LeBron didn't do much. Now, granted, he was a young player, not on a great team. But when LeBron was there, he was very good. There's no question about it. But when he went to Boston, he wasn't great. And in Brooklyn, he hasn't been great either. They've only won one playoff series for crying out loud. And, the, you know, this year against the Boston Celtics, they got completely outclassed. You know, they had the four-point lead late in game one. And Kyrie, I think, had 36 points or 39 points up to that time. But ever since then, or those last three games, he did not play well. There's no, there's no question, Ben, that he's a talented player. But to me, it's about relying on him. Can you rely on him for – can you give me 60 or 65 games a year can you play well in the playoffs but as you know with Kyrie it's always something this year it was the vaccination status I'm of the belief if every player in the NBA said you know I'm not playing with uh, anybody that that doesn't get the vaccination Kyrie would have gotten it and you know and said well I don't know I can't play now because this put it this way there's always something with Kyrie and I think that's what drives his current team crazy and I think that's what drives potential suitors crazy as well might be tough for a team to rely on him, but I can rely on your show uh, creating a lot of content because if he creates a lot of content and when you yeah. watch him on Twitch or you see him on Instagram, I wonder, Frank, from your perspective, again, as someone who's covered the game for a long time, do you think about what some of the players in the 80s and 90s would have done with social media? Who would you like to have seen on a Twitch live stream? <laughs> well, let's face it. I think, I think Dennis Rodman certainly would have been pretty good. And even though Charles Barkley says that he would not have gotten involved in stuff like that, I could see him doing something like that. Then you think about guys like Vernon Maxwell and John Starks. Now, Jeff Van Gundy always used to have a pretty good saying that, you know, the only two guys – that actually did a pretty good job defending Michael Jordan were John Starks and Bernie Maxwell because they were both crazy enough to think that they were just as good as Michael Jordan. I think Gary Payton, remember how much he used to run his mouth, I think would have been good. I think Michael Jordan, I think he would have stayed out of it. I think Michael, Michael Jordan liked people coming after him, and then he would use it 
like his motivation. Kobe kind of became that same kind of player. But it's funny, hey, Ben, as you know, they provide so much content. Look at a guy like Ben Simmons, who came to Brooklyn, never played in a game, is showing up on the sideline wearing these like crazy outfits. So a guy that was hiding on the court in the fourth quarter of games now wants to be noticed just sitting on the bench. He ends up showing up in Las Vegas sitting in the front row. The guy has not played a game since last June, but like he loves being in the center of attention. It's, it's just very bizarre. Yeah, but Frank, sources are telling me he's in the best shape of his life. Yes. He's ramping yes. up. Yes, he is. He's ramping yes. up, and we're going to expect big things from him this season. Is ramping up your favorite phrase in sports? <laughs> and now everyone uses it. If you watch, like, the news, I've heard the weathermen say it, weather women as well. I've heard anchors on news programs say that became the new term in the NBA, which was a fancy way of saying the guy's not playing. You know, it was, the force, it was all these different stages. It was first you're clear for on-court activities, then it's one-on-one, Two on two, three on three. You skip over four on four. You go back to you go to setback. Don't forget setback. You go and then you then you have a setback, and now you're ramping back up to on court activities. And doesn't it drive you nuts too that it's always the guys that didn't play during the regular season? Kawhi Leonard is in this camp. Uh, uh, John Wall, Zion Williamson, famously now is in this camp where they don't play at all. The minute the you know the last game of the finals is played. Every day you got to read or hear something about how those guys look great in their workouts. It always happens the minute the season ends. Guess what, guys? There are 82 games next season. You could prove to us how good you look. I don't care about summer workouts and all this other nonsense. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Zion uh, Instagram 360 dunks like the day after the season (laughs) ends. Hey, Frank, this weekend out in Brooklyn, Donovan Mitchell Jr. will be throwing out the first pitch at the Brooklyn Cyclones game. It will also be Donovan Mitchell Jr. bobblehead night in Brooklyn. What does this mean? Will you be in Brooklyn? And will Donovan Mitchell be playing for the Knicks next year? Great, great job by the Cyclones because, A, you're going to get a lot of media people there. I think you'll get a lot of fans or you'll get a lot of Nick fans there. But it's also funny because, as you know, Richard Jefferson came out after the story, uh, after Agent Wojnarowski had reported that the Jazz are willing to listen to offers. He said, where's the loyalty now? As if Donovan Mitchell doesn't want to be traded to New York. Notice how Kevin Durant, it's out there that he wants to be traded. He's maintained a low public profile. Now, he's still on social media, but you really haven't seen him. Donovan Mitchell more than happy to show up at a game in Brooklyn where he knows everyone's going to bow down to him and he's going to get all the cheers and things like that. So he wants to come to New York. The Knicks have been, you know, plotting to get him now for two or three years. You know, the deal that I guess uh, was reported by the Athletic, the six first-round picks and all those players, the Knicks, uh, the Knicks would be crazy to do something like that. And you have to be careful with Danny Ainge because Danny Ainge doesn't always hit a home run. The trade for Kyrie Irving didn't work out. But Danny Ainge is pretty shrewd, and he, he knows what he's doing, and he knows that the Knicks really want – Donovan Mitchell, but you know, I like Donovan Mitchell, and he's going to be an upgrade. But the guy is generously listed as six one. He, you know, he's not a big player. And if you're Allen Iverson, Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas, you could be. You know, there have been guys that could be that size and could be franchise players. In the case of Isaiah Thomas, he did win two championships. But you know, you're not getting Kawhi Leonard or, Le- or LeBron James here. So I think I think the Knicks fans are excited, and it's a big name. But let's remember, he did get bounced in the playoffs in the first round this year. Last year, as the best player on the Utah Jazz, they lost their final two games to the Clippers, and the Clippers did not have Kawhi Leonard. So, yes, he's a good player. I think it's going to happen at some point. If I'm the Knicks, I'm not giving up the farm to get him by any stretch of the imagination. But it's it's not the end-all, be-all. Well, if he does come to the Knicks and they make the playoffs, let's just hope he doesn't punch a fire extinguisher in the middle of a series. <laughs> Frank, you've been covering uh, basketball for a long time. It's got to be a trip for you to see Jalen Brunson get the bag from the Knicks and be the starting point guard for the Knicks. What are your earliest memories of young Jalen Brunson? This is a true story. 1999, during the NBA uh, playoffs, you know, his dad, Rick, was on the Knicks, you know, probably the last man on the team, and he was very close with uh, Marcus Camby and especially Latrell Sprewell. The three of them were as thick as thieves. And, you know, uh, there were a couple of times when Jalen would come into the locker room all the way back. I mean, he was real small back then. And I got to know, you know, I got to be pretty close with um, Rick and I became close with Leon Rose. Even on, I don't think now that Leon's worked for the Knicks, I don't think I've spoken to him in three years, but a bunch of years ago, my daughter um, had committed to Villanova and I was driving home from the school and Rick said to stop over at his house. I stopped over. He was having a barbecue and uh, Leon showed up and Jalen was there. Remember Tim Perry who played in the NBA? Who of course. I think who played at Temple, and I think was famously included in the uh, Charles Barkley trade, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, 
with uh, with the Phoenix Suns. He was there with his son, who was getting ready to play college basketball. So I got to know Jalen really well. He's a, I mean, he's a great person. And he's for the Knicks. To me, I get the money and everything like that. And everyone's good. How can you, uh, you know, all this money giving it to Jalen Brunson? He's a low maintenance, high production player. He's going to make everyone else around him better. He's mature. You know. We, ben, you and I always make fun of the Miami Heat and the media with the Heat culture, Heat culture. A guy like Jalen Brunson is going to help your culture. That's the kind of guy that you want. For me, I, I think it's a, I, I think it's a terrific player for the, uh, for the Knicks to get. You need to start somewhere, and getting him, he's only going to make. Like, look at the way Quentin Grimes has played in summer league. He's been very good. All these young players, uh, Brian Scalabrini, you heard him say today on radio where he said having Jalen Brunson with all these young guys is a great move for the New York Knicks. Hearing Frank Isola fired up for the New York Knicks point guard position in July, what is happening? I <laughs> keep I keep it real, Lord. You know all these other fans. Every move they make is the greatest thing ever, greatest thing ever. You tell people to pump the brakes, and then they call you a hater. I'm, you know, <laughs> listen. My opinion isn't always right, but I do believe. Listen, am I somewhat biased toward Jalen Brunson? <laughs> yes, I am. But I think I think he's a really. I could not believe that he went in the second round, which tells you that a lot of GMs miss it a lot of times. The guy did win two national championships when he was at college, and it wasn't. And he had good players on his team: Mikael Bridges, Eric Pasco. But it, you know, that wasn't. He wasn't playing with Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and Cam Reddish at Duke. You know, and the guy won two national championships. He was a national player of the year. He's a really good player who wins. And look at how well, I think what really cemented it for him was if you go to Game One against uh, against Utah this year, where you don't have. Uh, Luca out there, and Jalen had the really big game. Listen, did he have? Was he great in every playoff game? Of course he wasn't, but he but he's a really good player who's going to make the Knicks better. And you know what's going to happen, Ben? You and I both like him. In five years from now, everyone's going to say, "I knew that he'd be great." They're not going to give us any credit, so we're already we're already ready. We're already ready not to get credit for this. I feel like you're in it for the credit, and you never get it, Frank. Like even DeAndre oh. Ayton signing, you've been banging this drum for a long time. You know, you, you, well, and, well, explain explain to me, Ben, how in a league where everyone gets paid, including Michael Porter, who misses a ton of games and was in the same draft, he got a huge contract. But poor DeAndre Ayton, who went to an NBA Finals two seasons ago, was the starting center of a 64 win team, somehow couldn't get paid up until uh, last night. It, to me, it made. No sense. I mean, I, I think Phoenix made the right move. They actually got him. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper. The only thing now, if they had signed him, think about this, Pat. If they had signed him before the start of last season, now they could use him in a potential Kevin Durant trade. So waiting, waiting they got him actually cheaper than giving him the five-year contract, but now they can't move him until January. And obviously that first year, which I, didn't, I never know these salary cap rules, so please do not come to me the salary cap rules, but I did not know that he can veto uh, any trade the first year under this contract. So he actually has a little leverage his first year with the Phoenix Suns. Frank Isola joining the show, one half of the starting lineup on Sirius XM NBA radio, my favorite radio show when I'm not listening to this radio show. Ben Lyons <laughs> in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, getting back to Jalen Brunson, Frank, I'm not worried about Jalen Brunson. I know he comes from an NBA family. I know he's got a good head on his shoulders, but... He's playing point guard in New York City. We got fa- yes. fashion weeks coming up in the fall. We got the meatpacking district. I saw last year Evan Fournier, after he has the big opening night, he tweets out, I love the Lower East Side. What happens? His production goes right in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> if you're Jalen Brunson, what do you, where do you live in the city, Frank? What do you tell him about going out in New York City? And how tight are the leather pants where we start to get worried? <laughs> I think, you know what, I think you hit on something with, which is legitimate. And I even think for, like, some of the best players, you know, uh, John Stark was brilliant when he played for the Knicks, and he was a fighter and everything. Then all of a sudden, very slowly but surely, he got into golf and he got into fashion. And then the next thing you know is basketball, you know, your top priority. And sometimes it changes a little bit, and I think that has happened to players. I think for him, he is all about basketball. I think the fact that the Knicks practice up in Westchester will help. I know his dad is living near the practice facility. I'm not saying they're going to live together. I know that he has a pretty steady girlfriend, which is actually a good thing. Maybe at some point uh, Jalen will get engaged. But I I just don't think he's that kind of guy. I think he's all about basketball. And I do think he's the kind of guy that knows there's going to be a lot of pressure. And and you're 100% right about this. You know, it's one thing to be the second-round pick who goes to Dallas and anything that you do, everyone looks at it like it's great. Yeah, we're playing with house money. Now it's different. You do have the big contract 
And now it's going to be based on performance. It's not that, you know, you're going to have to play well all the time, but I do think he's up for something like that. And I, I don't think the money and the, you know, probably the power in some ways will go to his head. I think, I think he'll stay pretty well grounded. Frank, what I love about doing this show when Rich is out on vacation is that I've got a support staff here, a team of producers who will jump at a moment's notice to help me tell the best sports stories I can possibly tell. After several weeks apart, because of summer league and vacation, you and Brian Scalabrini are finally back together. And how did your support team and how did your producers treat you? Oh my God! They 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 sometimes I don't think they like me, which is a which is a little bit of an issue. My girl uh, Victoria and Marcos, who work behind the scenes, are really good. But Brian's unbelievable. Like the so the big, he does the big three. Why I have no idea. So I text him when the story comes out that maybe the big three could be folded. I get no response from him. But he's also heavily he's heavily involved in AAU. He coaches his daughter's uh, AAU team, and he said he was at an AAU tournament. I think it was in Cincinnati. And he said all these like AAU coaches and high school coaches and college coaches all tell him how much they like the show. He said that nobody talked about his playing career. I didn't have the heart to tell him your playing career wasn't that memorable where they would talk about it. He said all they wanted to talk about was the radio show, which actually made me feel uh, pretty good, believe it or not. Greatest player I've ever played with in an organized basketball game. I played with him in a charity game. I think he went for 35 and 15. Was he shooting that. Yeah, was shooting Didn't from. We talk about this? Yeah, and I, I don't think I've ever talked to him about. It. I don't think I've ever talked to him out after that day. But it was unbelievable display of basketball. He dominated Keenan Allen, Sal Masakela, and the third vampire from Twilight. It was a <laughs> tremendous performance. Hey Ben, when he, uh, you know, so he still does that. Where he, when he's working at a gym, a high school kid would say, "I'll beat you," and Brian says, "Well, we have to bet." And the last time he did it, it was only a couple weeks ago. He said, "If you win, I'll give you my truck." And somehow this truck is $80,000. Who's spending $80,000 on a truck? I have no idea. But the kid said, okay, what do I have to put up? And Brian said, put up your phone. The kid's like, yeah, no problem. So Brian destroys the kid. I think it's like 6 nothing. Whatever they played, a 6 or 10 or 11, whatever the case may be. But he shuts him out. And Brian takes the kid's phone. And the kid is getting upset to the point where he's almost crying. And he never actually – he eventually gives it back to the person. But he says, you know, you have to play. We have to play for something. And the kid was getting all excited, like, oh, I'm going to take on this truck. The kid didn't take a point on him. He's six foot nine, and he played in the NBA. I think sometimes people are a little misled by how good you have to be to play in the NBA. Even the guys that don't play a lot are still pretty good players. Oh, of course. When guys like you and I sit up here and give our opinions, I mean, it's ridiculous. They, they are the, the greatest athletes uh, in the world, except for Evan Turner, who I think I'm better than, but I digress. Uh, Frank, thank you <laughs> so much for uh, taking some time, man. And I truly, uh, I mean it when I say it, your radio show is terrific. It's my favorite listen every morning before this show. Keep up the great ben, work, man. Ben, thanks a lot. By the way, you did a great job uh, hosting that little uh, Manchester United Tottenham thing that they did in uh, Brooklyn a few months back. You're like a big shot. See, I You're appreciate that, that, Frank, because in a, pri- in a previous life, that would have been like a passive aggressive comment from Frank because he wanted no, to host that show because he's a big Premier really League guy. Good. But now that we're friends and we're no longer rivals, I appreciate the the, the, the kind like words. Carrick with knocking it out of the park. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Good luck with the parking. Take Talk care. to you soon. See you guys. Bye. Frank Isola prides himself on the parking in Midtown Manhattan.